son of a... Hello and welcome to Roos and Todd's Mobile Artillery Guide. In this video our main objective is to help you understand the mobile artillery so you can start using it the way it should be used. The mobile artillery is one of the new vehicles in the Armored Kill expansion pack for Battlefield 3 and perhaps the most unique so far. With its range of about 625 meters and rockets with devastating power it can be a valuable asset to your team in many ways if used in the right way. Though to the heavy damage you have to be very precise when the rockets has a small explosion radius. Remember that the mobile artillery is a light vehicle, it is very vulnerable so you have to be aware of threats that keeps coming up during the battle. The mobile artillery will spawn in your deployment or at the first capture point closest to your main base. When you have entered the mobile artillery you will see that the UI shows that there is two seats available, the driver seat and the gunner seat. This can be a bit misleading because you cannot be more than one player in this vehicle. The reason why there is two seats is because you should not be able to drive and shoot at the same time. That's why you have to switch seat by pressing F2 for the gunner seat. You also have countermeasures like IR smoke and proximity defense. They are used by pressing the X button which is the default key. But remember that you have to be in the driver's seat to deploy any countermeasures. So if you are sitting in the gunner seat shooting like a maniac against an enemy base, you have to switch to the driver's seat by pressing F1 to deploy the countermeasure. When you are in the gunner seat you shoot by pressing the left mouse button. If you want to change to your secondary weapon, you just have to press number 2 on your keyboard, and there you go. The mobile artillery got 11 different specializations that you can unlock for use. And to make this video more relevant, we have decided to talk about only the two new perks when the other specializations has been around for about a year now. So with that said, I'm going to start talking about the proximity defense specialization. Proximity Defense is a perk of the category Active, and is used as a countermeasure against infantry such as engineers with repair tools and support with C4. It will also disable quad bikes. When you are in the artillery vehicle, you will have to be seated in the driver's seat and press the key for countermeasures to activate it, which is X on PC. When activated, any infantry within 5 meters will instantly perish and a 30 second CD will initiate. The use of this specialization probably won't be very high when engineers tend to attack you from range with rocket launchers and support guys probably will see for a parachute drop on you when you're standing so far from the action anyways. So you would have to find special locations to make this perk more effective than for example IR smoke which is placed in the same category. A good specialization combination for this specialization is proximity scan which helps you notice infantry who will try to destroy you up close. The second and last one of the new perks is called Airburst Missiles. The Airburst Missile is a secondary weapon for the gunner seat. It has an ammunition capacity of 2 rockets and reloads in about 9 seconds, which matches up good with your main rockets. As it says in the description of, of this specialization, it is meant for killing infantry. The missile impact will explode in a larger radius than your normal missiles and will still one-shot them. This specialization is perfect for extending your burst of rockets when engaging infantry and light vehicles like jeeps and quad bikes. A recommended specialization combination for this specialization is autoloader. Even though it also makes the CD for the airburst shorter, it will still provide you with more main rockets and your bursts will be even more powerful. As a last note, I want to say that you can't damage armor with this specialization. Now we're going to talk about how you should think and act in combat, what to look out for and how to play for your team. First off, you need to find a good position where you can start helping your team moving forward. The position you should be looking for is a place where you can engage as many bases as possible. It's also very important that you are protected by some sort of cover in the form of something like a rock or just being behind friendly troops. When positioning yourself, you also gotta remember that if you are standing in a slope, it will be really hard to predict where your rockets will impact, which is a huge negative effect when the vehicle is all about that. The key feature when engaging the enemy is to bring up your minimap by pressing M, and make sure you are viewing the whole map. The minimap can be adjusted by pressing N on the keyboard. 
So when you are positioned in a good spot, it's time to start scanning the minimap and decide what you want to attack. Your highest priority should be high populated areas such as capture points. When trying to hit your targets, we can recommend that you shoot away one or two rockets to see where they land on the minimap. And then adjust accordingly and fire off the rest of your rockets. When you have adjusted your aim and know where you will hit, you should also try to move the cursor in a circle like this. The rockets will then cover a larger area and increase the effectivity of your engagement. Even if you don't kill anything, you will still scare the enemy and some of them might run away from their cover and your teammates will have an easier time picking them up. When playing with friends, communication can really spice things up, because you can give them great support while getting crucial information in exchange. You should always tell your friend to spot everything they see, this will make you a much more deadly weapon on the battlefield. The Reken class is a very viable squad mate when playing together. The class can provide you with effective spotting equipment such as the MAV and the Tugs. And as we have said before, the mobile artillery is a very vulnerable vehicle, so you always have to look out for different threats. The most common ones are air vehicles and flanking infantry. When you are getting attacked, you should always try to eliminate the enemy ASAP with your rockets. If you feel that you can't handle the situation, you should either try to drive away or just getting out of the vehicle. A useful specialization for enemy infantry is proximity scan that will make you even more aware of the area around you. You can also use a secondary weapon like the at the camps missile. It works exactly the same way as a guided shell. This will increase your survival chance versus ground vehicles like tank destroyers and MBTs. You can also use anti-air missiles to complicate things for the enemy air vehicles. In the last part of this video we will share our favorite setups of specializations for the mobile artillery. The first one is the most efficient and aggressive one, and consists of autoloader, IR smoke and airburst missiles. This setup will provide you with maximum artillery power and an option for you to remove lock-ons. It's recommended to use this when you feel safe in your team and doesn't get attacked by the enemy too much. We also have a defensive setup containing proximity scan, IR smoke and anti-air missiles. This is recommended when playing in a team that isn't protecting you, and you need to take the aggressors in own hands. And you will still be able to provide support with your normal missiles. You will always be an easy target, but this setup makes it a little bit easier to survive. As for the remaining specializations, we don't find them very useful, but we are sure that there are different situations where every one of them can be needed in some kind of way. Thanks for watching the video, next time we will cover the tank destroyer. I hope you liked it and uh, subscribe if you want some more in the future. I'm Todd and my friend is Rooster. See you next time.